Hey everybody, my name is Tucker Klingensmith, and today I'd like to talk to you about hippocampuses. Please bear with me as I think I'm coming down with a little something that is cold in my house. Anyways, a uh, hippocampus is a very uncommon and unusual word, as you may be able to gather from reading or hearing it. Is it a school for chubby African aqua mammals? Not exactly. It's a little more special than that. That was a joke referring to hippocampus as a hippo campus. I just punched my microphone. Uh, primarily known in the U.S., anyone who might know this unique word may infer that the phrase is Latin. Hip campus is actually Greek and was coined by a 16th century anatomist and surgeon named Julius Caesar Arantius. Not to be confused with Julius Caesar. Uh, Arantius, uh, says the Journal of Neuropsychology. Sorry, I'm so... Says the Journal of Neurosurgery. Uh, found that the shape of the seahorse had a strange combination of other widely known animals. It has a horse's head, a monkey's tail, and a marsupial's pouch, like a kangaroo. He dubbed it, in Greek, hippos campos. Hippos meaning horse, campos meaning sea monster. <laughs> Excuse me. A Greek seahorse is literally called a horse sea monster, which sounds like something from a Percy Jackson novel. As fearsome as sea, <laughs> sea monster horses sound, they are incredibly fragile to humans, but extremely dangerous in the sea. One may see a seahorse's body as small and fragile, but seahorses are simply ocean battle tanks with a handle. Nothing can eat a seahorse as they have an exoskeleton similar to that of an insect, like an ant. This cartilage shell causes a severe digestive problems in, predator, <laughs> in predators, according to PBS.org. Assuming, of course, that the seahorse doesn't lodge itself in the predator's throat and choke it out first. Two, sing two things threaten seahorses. Humans and seahorses. Many may know this innocent creature as the only male animal that gives birth. This is partly true. The male still impregnates the female like every other creature, but before the seahorse cults are born, the female impregnates the male with live seahorses. See, the babies will continue to grow and develop in the safety of dad's torso, and then the magic happens. The father seahorse will pump water in and out of his chest, releasing about 2,000 sea babies, according to OceanConservancy.org's blog. Baby seahorses are actually called fry, not sea colts, as fun as that would be. But uh, <laughs> fry have a fate worse than sea turtles' death run birth. Mama sea turtles give the babies a chance by burying the eggs in, in the sand. Daddy Seahorse takes about two hours to collect himself, rebuild his stamina, and then he gets hungry. Any fry that didn't swim as though their lives depended on it didn't know that their lives did depend on it. Daddy Seahorse, after his two-hour rest, will begin to eat his own children. Wait, aren't humans a threat too? Why would we want to eat a seahorse? Both are great questions, and nobody should just eat seahorses. Seahorses are actually used for their medicinal value as a dried seahorse in, is believed in Chinese medicine to be connected with kidney and liver meridians according to Pharmacology of Chinese Materia Medica, written by K.K. Chen. These organs were believed to contribute to balance and growth, much like the yin and yang, which <laughs> balance is from the kidneys. Here comes my dog. <coughs> Uh, balancing in the modern day, the powdered bodies um, can be used to treat asthma, insomnia, some infections, and well, mostly skin infections, according to acupuncture's acupuncture today's article. Seahorse. Why are you? Okay, let me just move the camera real quick. Hi, dog. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> A human and seahorse have something in common: the hippocampus. The hippocampus is also the name of an essential part of the brain's frontal lobe. It works with flexible cognition, which is essentially learning. The brain uses experiences and other learned details and traits to formulate memory. Frontiersign.org says that the hippocampus takes reflections from current situations and environments to create reactions. It helps us remember people, faces, routines, and even develop personalities. <clears throat> Whichever hippocampus you favor it is up to you, but whichever it may be, it's your own hippocampus that remembers what that fantastic word means.
my sources are uh, li li excuse me, listed on my outline. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye.